Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Crystal Sabeto, a former Hikino student from Waianae High School on the west side of Oahu. Welcome to our final episode of four Hikino specials, focusing on compassion. When we looked back at all the stories Hikino students have produced, we saw that there were some common themes among them, topics that clearly showcase students' compassion. The three topics highlighted thus far, kapuna, the parent and child relationship, and self-identity. Our fourth topic, and the theme of this episode, is a little different from the rest. This time, our subjects aren't people, they're animals. Whether they are house pets, working pets, exotic animals, or endangered species, it is evident that Hikino students show concern and care for our furry companions and wildlife. Without further ado, let's take a look at how animals have impacted Hawaii's young people in Hikino, focus on compassion, animals. In our first story, the Kauai Humane Society goes the extra mile to promote dog adoptions. Taking these sheltered dogs out for a walk is turning into a real treat for humans and dogs alike. From Kapa'a High School, this is Dog Adoption. Here on the island of Kauai, the Humane Society offers a special treat for locals and visitors. They allow them to take a dog out on a field trip. This unique idea came about unexpectedly from an employee's suggestion. The field trip started about two and a half years ago, kind of on a lark, if you will. Somebody made an offhand comment about taking a dog out for a day, and it just expanded from there. And over the first six months, we just put a lot of thought into how can we make this work as a program rather than just something somebody does on a whim. After months of planning, they launched the Doggy Field Trips, the first of its kind in the United States, and it was a success. I'd never been in a humane society before until we came on vacation here, and uh, we took about four field trip. We took her out in the morning and took her to Mahalapu Beach. She wore an adopt me vest. A lot of people paid attention to her. She enjoyed her day out. And when we left here, it was a little emotional, wondering whether or not she was going to be adopted. And she did get adopted. And in that time while we were here on our field trip that day, we met another dog here who had been surrendered. She was seven years old, and we adopted her last week. Visitors arrive in the morning, pick up a dog, and take them to a variety of places suggested by the Humane Society, including dog-friendly beaches, bike paths, and hikes. So they get to go out for the day, whether it's the beach, whether it's a hike, they get to get exposed by other visitors, um, as well as themselves. Um, they may be somebody that has a home or that is looking for a dog that has a home that will allow a dog, and they end up getting adopted because they fall in love with them. The doggy field trips have led to an increase in adoptions with an average of two to four more dogs a week finding their forever home. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great thing that they've done. I think it's allowed for so many dogs to be adopted. Visitors are the most frequent users of the field trips and some find themselves with a furry souvenir from their trip to Kauai. Funny, uh, a lot of people that already have dogs, two and three dogs back to the mainland, they come over here, do the doggy field trip, and all of a sudden they're bringing a fourth dog home uh, kind of thing. So it's a great program. With a total of over 200 dogs having been adopted so far, the field trip program is still going strong. This is Samantha Gilbert from Kapa'a High School for Hiki Now. With the homeless cat population on the rise, the Maui Humane Society comes up with a solution that benefits the whole community. Let's see how this compassionate group of people is making a difference in Towards No More Homeless Pets by Lahaina Intermediate School on Maui. According to the MauiGoodness.com, there are anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 homeless cats on Maui. The SPCA Maui organization has come together to make an attempt at ending the pain and suffering of this population on Maui. Our total focus is spay and neuter. And we feel with the, the overpopulation of animals throughout the country, on Maui, what we want to focus on is prevention. 
On January 8th, a spay and neuter clinic was held at the Maui Humane Society. We've been in the planning stages for about three months at this point, uh, from the time that we scheduled Dr. Hatt, who's our veterinarian, and then about four weeks ago is when we really started making reservations for the cats that are here today. When the cat owners and collectors got to the clinic, they had to check in. So I don't, I haven't, I can't rule I don't. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to put three in. After they organized the cats, they sedated and shaved the females in the surgery room. A lot of these cats live outside and these females can get pregnant six times a year and have six kittens every litter. So it's really important to try to control the population here in Maui by having these female cats spayed. After the tattooing in the room, they would be placed outside in their cage. Here they would recover. So we're here on the recovery section of the um, surgical part of it. We have over 25 additional volunteers here today. And then when they're more um, alert, we'll call their families and pick them up. Well, I think we have 180 cats today that we're doing. We're terrifically pleased today. Of course, we are always happy to have as many cats as we can. Our goal was 80, and it looks like we've doubled our goal. So I think we've done a really good job. The volunteers and coordinators feel a spay and neuter clinic has made a positive impact on the community. Local residents know the overpopulation of homeless cats in Maui is a problem. This event will prevent the birth of hundreds, if not thousands, of unwanted cats in the future. This is Kaylee Harmon, Anise Bell, and Kaylin Matsuda from Lahaina Intermediate for Hikino. These exotic residents of the Big Island are under the care of a passionate owner with a special place in her heart for surrendered, captured, and injured species not indigenous to Hawaii. From Keala Kehe High School on the island of Hawaii, this is Three Ring Ranch. You don't usually associate bison, monkeys, or zebras with the Big Island of Hawaii. But these animals are all residents of Kona's Three Ring Ranch Exotic Animal Sanctuary. The owner and curator of this unique place is Ann Goody. So animals have always been my life. They've been my hobby. I've worked with them ever since I was a kid. Whether they were sick and injured in the neighborhood and brought to me to fix up or just pets. <laughs> the Three Ring Ranch opened in 1998 and its mission is to positively impact the environment while educating Hawaii's youth about their place in the world. This guy is a perfect alpaca as far as like show and quality of hair. He was wild caught in the jungles of Indonesia 48 years ago, when it was still legal to seize these birds from the wild. Don't make that mistake though. Don't judge an animal's intelligence against our own. Don't do it. Because when you do that, you miss out on the amazing things that an animal can do. This was seized coming into the United States. Oh. Investigate science. Get your hands into it. Pick it up. Touch it. Learn about it. And then share it with the next generation. That is a huge part of who we are. The ranch is the only fully accredited exotic animal sanctuary in Hawaii. All profits and donations go towards educating the community and caring for the 151 animals currently living in the sanctuary. These animals are not pets, they're exotic animals who for one reason or another were either owner surrendered, sent to us by the state, or seized. Her natural comfort and skill with the animals makes you wonder how she came to this line of work. So I was living the American dream, working hard, buying things. It was my goal. You know, like everyone, so you work hard, you buy things. And then I got married, and the day after a wedding reception I was struck in the head by lightning. Had to learn all over again. Everything. Anne's road to recovery was long and difficult. Her challenges trying to communicate and function left her very frustrated, but are the reason the ranch came about. I redirected, and the animals became not just what I used to help learn to walk and talk, but who I am. I changed my whole perspective from 
the ambitious person trying for the monetary goals to the person who was more concerned with what I left for those creatures with two legs and four. It became my life. Thanks to many kind volunteers, generous donations, and the relentless efforts of Anne, Three Ring Ranch continues to expand educational programs while caring for the animals in need. This is Isai Batra from Kalke High for Hikino. Our next story features a pooch that makes friends and a fashion statement wherever she goes. From Mid Pacific on Oahu, this is our friend, Hokulani. I mean, she's just like the little ambassador of, of Aloha. She always brings a smile. You know, she's, he's just bringing joy to the world, one, one appearance at a time. She is Hokulani, a nine year old Pomeranian. Her owners, Norman and Debbie Dung, never expected Hokulani to become such a hit when they first adopted her. We always say if she brings joy or laughter, makes someone smile, it's a good thing. And she does that in spades. I think it's really actually um, generous of Norman to, to take Hokulani out. And he visits people, you know, elderly, children, um, just to bring a smile. She definitely makes people smile. Um, she, her, her owners are just so creative. Especially during Halloween, we know that Hoku is the dog to beat. You know, one year she was Lady Gaga, it was crazy. Crazy it is having to choose from the 125 sets of clothes, eight different pairs of doggles, and the countless other accessories, some of which are gifts from smiling friends. She has a nice coat, a nice, nice fur, and very neutral color, so she matches basically anything you put on her. She's one of the few dogs that'll let you leave stuff on her head. So she has a collection of hats. She also has accessories. She has little handbags, purses, uh, hats, hakus. She wears a lot of lays with her Hawaiian attire and a lot of jewelry. And we think she's the best dressed dog on the island. Most of her social media friends agree. Having accumulated over 1,360 likes on her Facebook page, which is littered with albums of her new friends. What we do is when we go out on outings, during the course of the day, we'll come when we're shopping. Once we stop and somebody wants to take a picture, we'll oblige them. And, but once somebody's looking and say, what are they taking a picture of? And then they'll, they'll look and they say, oh, look at that cute dog. And if they like, we'll let people hold her and take a picture of her and be on her Facebook page. We call it Hokulani's Friends. Currently, she has 43 albums of pictures with, with friends on it. Those 43 albums contain over 2,000 photos, some of which have Hokulani in the arms of Hawaiian celebrities, but the rest are just smiling people, which is a good thing. For Hiki no, this is Nathaniel Kaneshige from mid Pacific Institute. Training your puppy to sit and roll over is part of what makes being a dog owner fun. But when you train a dog whose tricks serve a purpose to someone in need, the reward is much greater. From the island of Maui, Seabury Hall Middle School introduces us to a young dog trainer with a passion for service. Hi. Kate Peterson loves animals. She grew up on the family ranch in upcountry Maui, where she learned patience working with dogs and horses. Kate volunteers at Assistance Dogs of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization that trains dogs to assist people who have disabilities and other special needs. Well, I was around 10 years old when I started working here, volunteering, and I started because my mom's really good friends with Mo Moore, who founded this um, organization on Maui, and I started as a really young kid um, just watching her train the dogs and watching graduations and seeing dogs get matched with people. And as I grew up and got to the age where I could finally volunteer and work here, I took that opportunity. Despite the demands of finishing her senior year at Seabury Hall School, Kate continues being an enthusiastic volunteer. Dog training certification requires a four-year college degree and a two-year apprenticeship. As a volunteer, Kate has assisted in training and in the process of matching a dog with a client. We normally 
look at traits of the dog first and through the one to two years of training the dog before they're matched, we look at the dog's personality and how they act and what qualities they're really good at with the human. So we're not necessarily matching the human with the dog, we're matching the dog with the human. And that kind of sounds similar, but it definitely has a really great success rate. The joy Kate experiences when she sees the clients interacting with their dogs fires her passion for this community service. Kate will never forget assisting with one very special match. For my eighth grade project, I helped in the process of training a dog for a woman named Cammie. She used to be a beautiful hula dancer and soon was paralyzed to where she was in a wheelchair. And the dog Murphy, he, um, he changed her life drastically. And I'm getting goosebumps because of it, because it was such an amazing experience to be able to see how happy she was with him. Just having a service dog, even if you are capable of opening a door, with, even when you're in a wheelchair or little things like that, having a dog just makes it so much better and easier for you to get through your day. And knowing that they're there supporting you all along the way um, definitely is one thing that has helped a lot of people all over the world. This is Lucas Martino from Seabury Hall Middle School for Hiki No. Good girl. Our next story has a similar take on how dogs can serve a greater purpose. We see how soldiers with physical and mental scars can benefit from the company of man's best friend. From Waialua High and Intermediate School on Oahu, this is Wounded Warriors. The poet Burn Williams once said, there is no psychiatrist in the world like a puppy licking your face. Marine Lance Corporal Daniel Carter was stationed in Afghanistan in February of 2010. Carter was severely wounded in combat and almost two years later he still has medical complications which also include symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder which is commonly called PTSD. PTSD is a mental health condition triggered by a terrifying experience. Some of the symptoms associated with it are uh, nightmares, uh, severe anxiety, flashbacks, and these can also be accompanied um, by thoughts of the actual event itself that are uncontrollable. Carter is one of the few Hawaii-based Marines who received 100% disability due to his injuries. Um, I was shot once the chest and I was blown up three different times. Some of his physical injuries included gunshot and shrapnel wounds, nerve damage, broken ribs, and internal bleeding. And when I came back to the, I was forced into go into the Wounded Warrior program and once there the docs never released me. Susan Lores of Hawaii Fido trains puppies to become certified companion service dogs for the soldiers in the Wounded Warriors program. But oftentimes they need a dog that does more than calm them down and help with the anxiety. Uh, the Wounded Warrior dogs are trained just like the regular service dogs. It's a two-year training program. They do lots of training skills and then they're matched with an individual who also gets trained. Finn is a um, unique dog. Um, he takes care of me when I'm in a lot of pain and I can't, I can't get out of bed. He'll, uh, he'll get my medication for me. He'll, um, he'll get on the bed and comfort me. If, when I'm having bad dreams at night, he'll wake, he'll wake me up so I don't have to experience it. Uh, we have found the results of this program that definitely reduces anxiety, helps with the night dreams, night terrors, gets them out of their homes, uh, interacting with society, and overall just kind of keeps them calmed down. I see a, a huge difference. Um, I'm a lot more active. Uh, I, I talk to people a lot more. Um, I'm doing this interview right now. So. <laughs> with Finn in my life, I've stopped, I've quit drinking. Um, I've quit smoking. Um, not as angry, um, a lot, I think I'm a lot more happy of a person. Carter, along with Finn, has recently left to California to pursue his dreams of attending college and becoming a counselor for soldiers in the Wounded Warriors program. This is Wailua High School reporting for Hiki No. 
Next up, a safety issue at a Kauai airport has officials on a wild goose chase. From Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai comes a story about the efforts to protect Lehua Airline passengers and our state bird, the Nene. The Nene is like the bird of Hawaii. It's one of the few remaining. There were only 30 birds left up in the mountains, only 30 that were wild in the entire state. Although the Nene's population has grown steadily, there are still only about 2,000 in the world. However, on Kauai, one population of Nene are thriving, growing from five pairs of birds to over 400 and counting since 1999. This one location alone represents a whopping 20% of the Nene population in the world. However, there's just one problem. The, the concern is that there's a large number of birds that are nesting and breeding, and it's a growing population on Kauai Lagoon's resort. But it happens to be right next to the Kauai, the Lihue Airport, right in between the two runways. Luckily, there is a solution to this problem, which involves the Hawaii Department of Transportation and the Department of Land and Natural Resources. So it's a public safety issue. So our job is to move the birds away from the Kauai Lagoons so that they're not a risk to the airplanes. But moving them in isn't as easy as putting them in a box and sending them to an outer island. And it's not cheap either. It involves capturing the birds, putting them on an airplane or a helicopter, flying them off, putting in a pen, and taking care of them, then tracking their movements, and then making sure they survive and reproduce at their new site. Total cost over the entire five-year period it's going to be about a million and a half dollars in the first year, and then it'll be about $800,000 each year after that. It turns out that moving them is not all that easy. It's an enormous number of birds, 400, 800, or 1,000 birds possibly. They've got to be moved in a safe manner so that they're not harmed. We want to make sure that the birds don't just fly out of that site and fly right back to Kauai. And so what we can do in order to get them acclimated to that new site is to clip their wings so that they can't leave the site. Initially, the cost of this project will be funded by the Department of Transportation. However, after the fifth year, the Department of Land and Natural Resources will have to find a way to keep the project funded if it's still a problem. Both agencies are working hard with the state to not only protect and safely move the birds, but to also protect the airline passengers coming in and out of the Lihue Airport. It's a, it's a big job. Um, but uh, it can be done, and we're looking forward to doing it. For Hikino, this has been Sheree Kua reporting from Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School. Our final story is about one of the most endangered species in the world, and they're found exclusively in Hawaii's waters. Hikino students from Aliamanu Middle School on Oahu show their concern for our Hawaiian monk seal in their story, Malama Noa. Under the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act, NOAA Fisheries plays a key role in the protection and stewardship of marine mammals. A top priority of NOAA is the protection of the Hawaiian monk seal, one of the most endangered mammals in the world. The latest records show that only about 1,200 exist in the world today. Unless everyone does their part, the monk seal will not be around for future generations. It would be a shame if the Hawaiian monk seal went extinct on our watch Future generations wouldn't be able to witness them in the wild and enjoy their beauty and their presence. Just this morning, I assisted with transferring two Hawaiian monk seals that were brought to our facility here on Fort Island last night on an airplane from Midway up in the Northwest Islands uh, to transfer them to the Coast Guard station here at Barbers Point so they could be flown to a hospital over in Kona. And the goal is to, within about two to three months, put a, about 150 to 200 pounds on them, and then send them back up to the Northwest Islands. Assisting the Protected Resources Division is the Office of Law Enforcement. They are the ones out in the field making sure that the rules are followed. So when people intervene with the local marine, marine wildlife, it's normally tourists and um, people who are trying to get close and take pictures, um, which is most times not a problem, but we have to remember that they're um, wild animals. And uh, just like you wouldn't want a wild animal coming into your house, we got to remember that we're going into their house, which is the ocean or the beach. And um, we need to remember to stay away and give them their space. There's a lot of ground to cover. And the responsibility of protecting marine life doesn't rest on the scientists and officers alone. We have volunteers who are out every day uh, looking at these seals, setting up 
seal protection zones or little outreach barrier areas that have signs that alert the public to the fact that there's a resting monk seal. Volunteers are trained by NOAA on what to do when they get the call to monitor a monk seal. We need to know what to do when we see a seal because prior to this program, I would not have known. I would not have known that you need to stay a certain distance away from the seal. I would not have known that seals come on shore to rest during the day. You know, I wouldn't have known any of that. Members of the community can show their care by contributing in different ways. The best thing you can do is um, volunteer in different programs, whether it be part of the Marine Mammal Response Program where you're on the beach every day helping to protect the monk seals or getting involved with invasive species removal or any of the other programs that we offer here at NOAA. Through these efforts, there is still hope that the Hawaiian monk seal will thrive once again. From Aoyamata Middle School, this is Malin M. Mendoza for Hiki no. Well, we have come to the end of our Hiki no series, Focus on Compassion. I hope you've enjoyed watching these stories as much as I've enjoyed presenting them to you. We have seen how Hiki no students cherish our kapuna, appreciate the parent and child relationship, value people's differences, and care for our planet's animals. With the mindful, inquisitive, and compassionate young people of today, I'd say we're headed into a bright future. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki no, can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.